God spreads his word generously. But, but how fruitful or not you are depends on you, on how you receive that word, how you receive that truth, whatever it may be from the gospel, from the word of God, how you take it in. If you, do, you can dismiss it or you can think about it and or let other things choke it. But those that receive it and take it in and think about it and, and see see how valuable it is, they are the ones that bear fruit. They are the ones that share it as well. If you've got no value, if you don't have any values to something, you're not going to share it. But we should share it because it's a it's a good news. The gospel is a good news that saved us. If you are born again, you're saved by the grace of God. It's not anything that you can do. It's what God does when we repent of our sin, put it aside and trust him as Lord of our lives. So do you take the word in? Do you let it absorb you? Do you let it sink in? Do you, do you think about it? Do you read it regularly? Because it strengthens ourselves as people in him. It strengthens our testimony of how we came to know him and how we keep it fresh. Because that's important. We must keep our testimony fresh that not God was good to us 20 years ago, when God, but God is still good to us each day and every day right up to time. And to, so that if we have a fresh testimony, we can freshen other people and be encouraging to other people within the church and with outside to draw them to him. It's truth. It's beneficial to everyone. If if it's true for me, if the gospel is true for me, it's true for you. If it's not true for everyone, it's only a cultural thing. It's only something that is true for that people. So it's not a universal truth, but the word of God is true universally. It doesn't matter who you are. Anyone who comes to Jesus Christ makes them Lord of their life. It works for them. It works for everyone. There's people who say, oh, I've tried that, but it, it didn't work. And they are false converts because they may have gone to a, long, to a meeting or a gathering and prayed the sinner's prayer or just followed what everyone else was doing or expected an experience. Or, or maybe they were brought up in a church where their parents brought them along and they just go along and assume it. They are saved because their parents may have been or not. It's a kind of traditional thing. Every individual must be born again for themselves. Everyone must come to repent and make Jesus Lord of their lives for themselves. Truth has nothing to do with taste or opinion. The gospel is true for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, um, how educated you are, or how rich or poor you are, whatever your IQ is, or none of those things, because the work of God is the grace of God. He sows words into your life, and you either accept it or you reject it. And here on this channel, we want you to accept the truth of the good news. It only works if you are genuinely repentant and are trusting in Jesus Christ. Don't start trying to trust in your own works and your own righteousness, which are filthy rags. Trust in him. A person who believes is one who adheres, trusts in and relies on Jesus Christ, the good shepherd that follows him. We want you to know him for yourself. And you can do just a simple prayer, of a genuine prayer of, repentance for your sin, putting aside, saying I don't want to live in myself or for myself anymore. I want to live for you. I repent of my sin. I put it away and trust in 
Jesus Christ who lived and died for my sin and I, I make you Lord of my life and that's a simple prayer but say it in your own words from your own heart and your own mind and God will do his work in you and you'll be, be born again the good news of the gospel is what God did for mankind because it's sin that separates us from him our rebellion and disobedience our sin is what separates from us from him and but Jesus Christ came willingly to lay down his life to save us from our sins because he was sinless and only he could be the sacrifice for sin. It's the greatest deal ever because your sin for his righteousness, his perfect righteousness, and he gives that to you in exchange for your filthy, horrible sins. And mine as well. He did that for me, but he can do that for you. That, and that's the gospel in a nutshell. John 3, verse 16. So all we have to do is accept the gift of salvation. And I hope you, if, you, if you're watching, uh, you will do that. Do it today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time of salvation. You don't know what could happen in the next 24 hours. But I hope that you can make yourself right with God just by repenting of your sins, turning it over to him, trusting in him and receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour to be born again. And that's today's message. We've been talking about the word of God. It does not return void. It does everything God expects of it to do. Just as Jesus Christ, the word of God, the he who became incarnate, came and did exactly what he was supposed to do, said the words he was supposed to say, did the miracles he was supposed to do, and died on the cross, took our, our sin, our shame, and nailed it to the cross with himself. It didn't end there. He was taken down, put in a tomb, but three days later, he rose again in triumph. And because of that, we can live new lives in him. If it had failed that, we don't, we wouldn't exist now. But it's by his grace. And there's going to come a time where he'll say, right, no more souls. That's it now. And that's when he will rapture the church and then there'll be a time of great tribulation. We're not going to go into that now. I want to thank you for joining us and I hope you've been blessed by what we've said tonight and that you, you've you taken notes and you will think about what I've said and think about the gospel. Think about the word as you read it. Let it read you. Let it enable you to examine yourself and have I said this wrong to someone today? Have I thought this wrong about someone today? Have I done something I know I shouldn't have done? You can give that to God any time. Even as Christians, we still sin and we still make stupid mistakes, but we can give them to God. When we do them, we recognize we have a conscience and we recognize when we've done wrong or said wrong or thought wrong. But without God, without him, without Jesus Christ as our Lord, we don't think, we don't give a second thought to our, our sins. But in Christ, we have a conscience because we are following him as his sheep of his fold, of his pasture. And we want to please him, not by our works, but by our trust in him. Anyway, I'm going to go on too long if I keep going. So thanks for joining us. And I hope that you'll subscribe, that you'll like, you'll share, you'll click the little bell icon and so you can get future updates for the next live stream and the next videos we're going to do. Thanks for joining us and I will see you soon. Bye. <laughs>